Hi, I'm Rachel Moot, and I'm here at the New England Aquarium's Animal Care Center, where I will be talking to you about our Lake Victoria Cichlid Species Survival Program and our very exciting new cichlid fry. The Animal Care Center, or ACC, is our off-site holding and quarantine facility about 10 miles south of Boston. This is where we quarantine new fish, hold animals off exhibit, culture larval fish and live foods for our sustainability program, and house our sea turtle rescue and rehabilitation program. I am here today to talk to you about our Lake Victoria Cichlid Species Survival Program, or SSP. Lake Victoria cichlids originate in Lake Victoria in Africa, which is the second largest lake in the world. It is bordered by Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. Historically, there were over 300 species of Lake Victoria cichlids. Sadly, due to a combination of factors, the population of these fish have drastically declined, and now only about half of these species survive today. Currently, seven species of Lake Victoria cichlids are held at 15 facilities across North America, and the New England Aquarium cares for two. I will be talking to you about my personal favorite, the two-stripe white lips. Two-stripe white lips are a group of pugnacious and territorial freshwater fish whose social dynamic is largely driven by the dominant male in the group. Here in the ACC, we have three separate groups of the same population of fish. This helps us to give everyone enough space and territory to prevent fighting and keep healthy social dynamics. Each of these groups are run by one to two dominant males who can be differentiated from the other males and females by their beautiful coloration, a dark black body with red tipped fins. What is most interesting about these fish is their unique way of raising their young called mouth brooding. This is when the female fish will incubate her eggs and eventually the hatched babies, known as fry, inside of her mouth in what is called a buccal cavity. It's easy to find a brooding female by looking at her jaws. If it looks distended, she's probably holding eggs or even fry. The whole process is fascinating. The female will lay 5 to 40 eggs on the substrate in front of the dominant male after he's courted her with a waggling swimming display. He will fertilize these eggs, which she then keeps in her mouth for about 10 days to incubate and then hatch. She continues to hold the newly hatched fry in her mouth for another 7 to 14 days, giving them more time to develop in safety. Once this time is up, the young fry are released into the world. To ensure the safety of the baby fish, we preemptively move any breeding females we spot and place them in seclusion to brood in safety. This sectioned off area has plenty of hiding spaces for the female so she feels comfortable during her stay. We do this for a couple of reasons. Firstly, these cichlids are pedophagic, which means that the adults will prey on juvenile fish. This is common in fish species, which is why fish will often spawn in areas with lots of hiding places or strong currents, which can carry newly hatched fry away to safety. A good rule of thumb with these fish is if the fry are small enough to fit inside an adult cichlid's mouth, chances are it will probably try and eat the fry. By separating out the female before she releases the fry, we eliminate the risk of other cichlids preying on them while they are still fresh and vulnerable. The second benefit of separating out the brooding female is for her own safety. In the wild, only females who are looking to breed will enter a male's territory. In captivity, dominant males will continue to pester females in an attempt to breed with them. This can cause undue stress. By placing her in seclusion, she's able to live in peace until she releases her fry. Think of it like a fish maternity ward. Once the fish are released, we return the female back into her original home and move the fry into a separate enclosure to grow up. We are very excited to be doing this work at the ACC. We plan to continue working with other institutions to increase the population of these species so that someday in the future we can see these fish possibly reintroduced back into the Lake Victoria Basin.